Hello, Assalamualaikum everybody. Hope you're all safe, sound and healthy. And it is steaming here. It's like a bloody sauna in here. I swear. It's been two to three days now like this. After the uh, two days, you could say. Uh, no, more than two days. I mean, even though you count the uh, the heavy uh, windstorm that took place, which was more like a dust storm in the middle of the night three nights ago it's still uh you know it, it somehow it just doesn't play into it because at the end of the day we have extremely steamy hot days filled with smoke and haze and it is unbearable believe me what i'm telling you it's unbearable the heat day by day is just breaking all records and as if that isn't enough you've got an incompetent government that is just constantly flailing i mean i thought these were veterans i mean come on you have been ruling this country for 40 years and you still don't know what to do i mean that shows that shows the kind of people you are it shows what kind of gutter snipes you are it shows how incompetent and corrupt you are that for 40 years you couldn't do a damn thing and you still can't do jack shit all right and here we are struggling and and you know uh, going through all sorts of hell the weather is hell the country is hell the law is hell the order is hell, the constitution is hell, everything's all in hell. Anyway, we're already living in hell, so I think it really doesn't even matter if we end up in hell after death, seriously. I don't see the difference here. And the government is talking about its so-called economic revival uh, project. I mean, seriously, how many times have you brought these kind of revival projects in the past 60 years? You know, this is nothing new, and you're talking as if you're the first people to have ever thought of it. Come on. It's been going on for years. Every now and then you make this, especially whenever it's Isaac Dar in the government, then there is always a bloody budget followed by a bloody revival screen, scheme. Seriously. And now they're lying through their teeth, as always. As always, they're just lying their asses off in front of people, talking about the economy, stabilization, and talking about no crisis, and talking about no need for IMF. If you don't need the IMF, then why the hell did you just try to get a new appointment with the MD of IMF, number one? Number two, why is this Akhtar running all the way to America? He's already gone, I think. Why is he there? I thought you had a geopolitical problem with America, so why, I mean, if nothing, if anything, that actually proves the fact that you are the agents of America and you have come to Pakistan to ruin this place, you have come to completely destroy Pakistan, but, in, but actually you have gone so out of control that even America and Britain, the two key players behind you all, they are completely... Uh, in in a panic mode and they've lost it because and they just don't know how to react to how things have spun out of control again i would remind you people you're messing with the wrong generation you're messing with generation y and generation z these two generations that were not born into a life of opportunities thanks to you people thanks to you boomers and then the, the, the Generation Y and Z are those who have completely nothing in their hands. Do you honestly think you can win against people who have nothing? People who have nothing have nothing to lose. You have a lot to lose. We have nothing to lose. You're messing with the wrong people. I keep on and on telling you. The army has realized that that myth that it was always trying to create about nobody being able to touch the army or about the public always being with the army, these two myths just got broken down on 9th May anyway. The public is dead against the army. Um, I think the public has never been so vocal um, since Fatma Jana's death. That was probably the first time that the public went rampant. And then now again, the public's gone rampant because the public doesn't have time for your bullshit. You're old dogs playing old tricks with a new audience. Keep your cliches to yourself. You know, the establishment has also just completely disgraced itself in the whole thing. The establishment, if nothing else, has actually turned on the self destruct button. And they're right now in self-destruct mode. So, good for you, jackasses. You just fucked yourselves up. And the, the, the Supreme Court, yeah, well, you know, I'm sorry, but I'm not feeling very sympathetic towards you because you're the ones that shot yourself in the foot. I mean, seriously, you shouldn't have taken Pangawa with Imran Khan, you know? Yo, you thought that because he was a civilized man and he was listening to you, then anybody else and everybody else will come and listen to you? Who were you kidding, really? I mean, who were you kidding? 
just one civilized man in the whole history of 70 years and you thought that oh change has come now we can exert our power abuse our power abuse our authority and and hey presto well you got your just desserts and now bandial chief justice bandial is being unceremoniously removed 3 months prior to his official resignation or retirement time anyway the man is going to retire in 3 months why is the government in such a hurry to to just overthrow the man and to unceremoniously remove him from his post 3 months prior to his retirement that is a question isn't it we all know the answer anyway it's because the government cannot deal with the supreme court anymore because the supreme court keeps challenging the government and so the, as i as i kept on saying imran khan's biggest mistake never putting his people in the most prestigious positions strategic positions to get his job done this is what these people do as you can see they have removed the chief justice because he disagrees with them and now they've put another chief justice who agrees with them and then see how now the the law is going to agree with every single thing that the government does this is pakistan yeah welcome to old pakistan yeah this is the pakistan that people are always raving about isn't it well you know i wish you all the luck in the world i guess this is what pakistanis really do deserve because a country a nation that is dead um i don't even see why one needs to work hard for that nation by the way what the hell are they trying to prove with these fake videos of uh, imran riaz khan just produce the real man okay produce the man already have you killed him or are you planning to kill him or is he near death's door what what is it what is it what what are you trying to do here i mean these antics by the government right now by the army by the intelligence agencies by the establishment these antics that they're pulling towards a journalist um i i think it it's practically painting a whole picture about what it is that they've actually done or they're scared that they have done so if he's alive no matter what condition he's in just bring the man in front of us stop with your stupid fake pathetic videos nobody's buying this shit and what about the other journalists they're not even in the country they're not even in the country but you're illegally trespassing into their homes you're illegally searching their homes you're planting evidence such as weapons like in the house of sabra shakir who is actually not even in pakistan he hasn't been here for a way long time and then you are trying to brand him a traitor seriously you're trying to brand wait please other traitor seriously what is wrong with you you're the traitors you think that branding other people a traitor on paper will keep you people safe you are on their record traitors there should have been a treason case slapped against you people when imran khan was prime minister and that is actually why people got pissed off at imran khan the real reason why people got pissed off at imran khan is that he did not try you people for treason he did not throw you into military courts and kill you all off you should have been dead by now seriously you should have been dead in order for pakistan to have the peace that it so desperately needs today but as long as you traitors are alive and what what is this open gunda gundagardi seriously what what is this open thuggery what is this open badmashi that you're going around kidnapping people and then placing them under false arrest and then you keep on uh, arresting them over and over again every time the court grants them bail i mean what what is this drama that you're playing do you honestly think you're going to save yourselves by doing all of this you think that the dogs that you're whose dogs you really are that your masters are going to let you eat in the same plate with them once the hunting is over you seriously zardari not even you are going to survive once the hunting is over because the masters always kill the dogs after the hunt is over and you will be killed by your masters once you've given them the hunt and was i right or was i right i told you shahid khagan abasi pro- most probably just you know created a whole fuss um and as soon as he would be called by nawaz sharif and he would have a meeting he would come out saying oh everything is all roses and peaches and you know it's life is full of a garden of flowers and everything is all fine and who said i'm going anywhere and that is exactly it he has suddenly announced that you know everything is all fine and peachy 
and then suddenly he is big he begins to give this message from Nawaz Sharif because Nawaz Sharif has been shitting his pants too since he almost exposed the UK the UK's role in this whole scenario um so Nawaz Sharif is now sending a message through uh, Hakan Abbasi to Imran Khan that oh we we are ready to have dialogues with Imran Khan sorry but are you even in the do you even have the authority to have any dialogues with Imran Khan he sure as hell doesn't think that it's not like they've stopped their corruption you know as i said that they are basically now going to wind up um steal as much as they can and wrap up uh, as if it isn't enough that they're barging into people's homes and using the police to steal all their stuff um they are still at it with their corruption as we have already noticed how Maulana's son though what status he has i still have no idea and yet he suddenly decides that he should be able to steal 3 billion 3 billion rupees um just uh, in you know from this from a 60 uh, million road project and now maryam nawaz i mean as if it again as if it wasn't enough that they have been illegally uh making housing societies totally illegally um now there is another housing society that they've erected um which is maryam's son-in-law who has erected it and now that he's made his housing society just to save him 70 crore the government is asked maryam has asked shabash sharif the prime minister to place a grid station by the housing society in our money basically using tax money right why should we pay for a grid station in a housing society that is owned by maryam's son-in-law according to law he needs to pay for it so why should we take the hit of 70 crore for him he if he can make us a housing society he can definitely get a grid station this is what these people are doing and they actually have the gall to stand in front of us and talk to us about who is a traitor and who is a corrupt person and how they are here for pakistan and how they're actually the real katta dharta of pakistan are you serious who are you talking to who are you fooling right now the only people that support these gov- th- these parties that have formed a coalition to make this illegal government are people who are blackmailed by them people who are threatened by them people who are bribed by them and their relatives and people who have gained financial benefits from them that is it the rest of the public has nothing to do with them wants nothing to do with them establishment establishment's god is money wherever money flows in from that becomes their god the that source of money in this country money is god it's as simple as that so a few hours into my recording of this podcast and suddenly um there is a, a sort of another rumor regarding Imran Riaz Khan and that is that he will be released in 2 days because um orders have come from high up but you know with all the weird stuff they've been doing I really don't know but he should be produced in front of us we should see him alive and kicking okay don't know how normal he's going to be don't know what he's been subjected to he needs to be alive he needs to be alive and he needs to be brought in front of us that's all we need okay um let's see let's see if this is just another stupid rumor or if they're actually going to release the man or well, once again imran khan um wasn't arrested although they came in full force uh when he went to court for bail against all the false charges laid against him and pervez ilahi um also um got bail but he did not even submit the bail because he knew that as soon as he would get out they would try to 
you know put another charge on him and that's exactly what happened so FIA was ready to slap another false charge of embezzlement on Pervez Elahi so Pervez Elahi did not even submit bail so he was already in so they couldn't uh, re-arrest him you can say for on another trumped up charge on the other side uh, other PTI members are being arrested over and over again um, we can see that this will continue unless and until the public does not finally get up and say enough is enough and I think that the public should stop being confused as to what it needs to do and it should just get up and do it like how it started before because there is no other way to stop these people especially since they have uh, funding and backing from the US and the UK um, obviously yes the British Pakistanis and the American Pakistanis uh, the Pakistani Americans they are definitely much more uh, powerful and active but again that does not mean that we should um, you know just throw all the burden on them and expect them to come and fix everything we need to be active equally as well so this is it for now um, this is me signing out until we get more and then we'll come back Hold the office.